<laughs> Hello, my name is Ian, and today I wanted to share with you a few different tricks I used for creating digital set extensions. And these tricks can be really handy for filmmakers or visual effects artists because they give you a lot of flexibility after you've wrapped up your shoot and you're left sometimes with something that's a little bit underwhelming and maybe you want to spice it up a little bit. So I'll explain and break down three different shots today and we'll go from two-dimensional to two-dimensional and three-dimensional to a fully 3D shot. Okay, let's get into it. All right, I'm here in the video sequence editor for Blender. And if I just scrub through here, you could get an idea of what's going on. It starts out upside down and then it rotates to be right side up. And the whole idea of this, I just thought it looked super dope at first. And then I was like, you know what? This could, this could have meaning to it probably. <laughs> and the idea is kind of like the character is disoriented and you are getting disoriented along with it. So yeah, that's what's that's what's going on there. And so this right here is a meta strip, which you can create by selecting two things and going control G like that. But if we hit tab, it goes into this meta strip and you can see the different parts of this shot. If we hide what's on top here, you can see what we've got is just the video and I've keyframed the rotation settings to go 180 degrees, pretty simple. But if we untab here, you can see these really nasty lines here where you could just see that the frame completely ends. And it's like, oh, you just rotated a video. That looks dumb. So what I've created on top of that, if we unhide the top layer and hide the bottom layer, is just this really simple extension layer that extends out the bottom a little bit and extends out the top a little bit and just helps it fade into the blackness a little bit more seamlessly. You can pretty easily see where the seam is, but it's a lot less noticeable than just plopping the footage in there and rotating it. And to create this extra layer, I just went into GIMP really quick. I imported a screenshot of the original video and I sized the project to be square rather than 1920 by 1080, it was 1920 by 1920. And I just used the clone brush and kind of painted this new layer on top of it. So yeah, pretty simple stuff for this first two-dimensional shot. For the second shot, I had a couple of different shots that I kind of wanted to piece together, and in the edit, it wasn't really working, and I thought, you know what, I got an extra day here, and so this is what I came up with, and here is the blend file. Looks like a big cube because it's basically a giant volumetric box guy. So basics of what's going on here, we've got a green screen element that I shot really quick of me pretending to crawl, and if I go into rendered view here, you can see there's this sky dome, which is actually an add-on called physical atmosphere and starlight or something like that. You just check the button up here and there's all sorts of fancy settings. It ended up being a really good investment. Next up, a big factor of the scene is this box. The secret sauce to this box is it's a volume scatter, really tiny density, a really high anisotropy, however you pronounce that. And now when you see the sun through it, you can see you get this beautiful looking bloom going on. And from camera view, that just really helps make things nice. Let me just make this scene a little bit more visible. Ooh, that's ugly. So I keyed my green screen out and just threw it on a two dimensional card here in the middle of this little hallway thing, put in some planks like an attic, put in some insulation like an attic, threw a bunch of pipes all over the place. There's a tutorial for that, I'll add a card somewhere. These are a really handy way just to add in all sorts of mess and make it look complicated without taking too much time or effort. And one of my favorite details is this little smoke card that makes it look like I was breathing out. And then another little detail that I added in was for this kind of wire mesh stuff. I just simulated that as cloth and just made that blow in the wind a little bit. Tiny things that just add a little bit that probably nobody will notice. So yeah, 2D and 3D elements working nicely together. Pretty cool. For the third shot, it was completely digital. Boy oh boy, this was a this was a big one. And the way I created this was I just set up a few different assets. You can see there's ground, there's these planks, there's a few more planks going on here. Then there's some background planks, which are lots of modifiers going on there. But basically I only needed to do it all once, and I used array modifiers to drag it down all the way like it's a giant 
attic hallway thing. A lot of it was from this specific camera view, so I knew I wouldn't have to be too crazy about building like the whole attic. And so once I created all those and arrayed them out to be nice and long, I parented all the attic parts to this empty here, which I just added a location keyframe to. And then in the graph editor, I added a generator modifier. And that just made it go perpetually off into the x-axis direction. <laughs> And the cool thing about this trick was now, from the camera view, it looked like everything's moving really fast. But when I add in the next element, which is a digital double, you can see it's just in one place, and that makes it so I don't have to keep moving around to animate it. Now this guy was a huge pain in the butt, because <laughs> there were some failed 3D scan attempts. I ended up getting something all right for the face, but it was a little bit scary, so <laughs> I wanted to make sure I was pretty far away. The clothes were just really basic models that I duplicated from a reference mesh, and I threw on some simulations on top of those. And then you can see there's some feet here that were also 3D scanned. They didn't turn out super nice, but once again, it's far away, so it doesn't really matter that much. And then I had my base mesh here that just kind of helped hold everything together. Now, one thing that I really wanted to get right and took me a really long time was the simulation on the clothes. You can see here there's a final result of something pretty nice going on, but I spent so much time simulating these and trying to get these really fine wrinkles on one side that kind of indicates the wind is really whipping. And in the end, I did do a basic layer of simulation, but if you look at this, this is all the simulation that I did, but I added a subdivision surface and a displace modifier, and that just added in some waves. I had some noisy cloud textures controlling that, and I added in the coordinates just to be this empty object that keeps moving. And so the textures are zipping past constantly and making it look like it's super wavy. And just to polish it off, I added in some white paint gradients just to make sure that it was only going on on one side. If we remove this, you can see a lot of craziness happens all over the mesh. But since it was just that part, it just ended up going on one side. Holy cow, that was pretty in-depth there. So going a little bit more big picture, one thing that hugely helped with this scene was just referencing the original footage I got and then looking back and matching up the light sources and the light temperatures, and that's the kind of thing that can kill you. If you have really good assets and bad lighting, it looks terrible, as you can see by me going like this. And the inverse is true as well. Even if you have fairly low detail assets, but the lighting is good, you can really sell a shot pretty well. It also helps that everything was moving and there was a bunch of motion blur on top of it all, but hey, you gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> All right, next on my list is how I brought this robot character to life and kind of made him look like he was part of the footage. That video is probably a couple of weeks out still though. So in the meantime, if you're interested in learning more on that topic, I've created a completely free training video for you where I cover five different techniques that you can kind of leverage to take your CG creations and put them in actual footage and make them look like they belong there. So if that sounds interesting to you, there's a link in the description. But hey, I'd say that about wraps things up. I hope you have an excellent day. And cheers.